Hello everyone. Welcome to this podcast series of IEEE Computer Society Compute Team. IEEE Computer Society Student and Young Professional SYP Committee Initiative. I am Arun, one of the core team members and we have Sneha with us today. She is based out in France and is a postdoctoral researcher at Ecole Centrale Lyon. She has been actively volunteering in IEEE for the past almost like 5 years and is currently serving as the chair for TechX 2023. for IEEE Computer Society SYP um, and team lead for climate and sustainability task force in IEEE young professionals she has been really really active in the sports domain and even helping fellow IEEE members and impacting society in a good way so before beginning a bit about what is IEEE compute IEEE CS compute is an annual official newsletter by IEEE Computer Society student and young professionals committee We aim to release global SYP newsletter covering all the 10 regions apart from featuring top technology articles globally and exclusive interviews it will even include impactful initiatives events by student branches chapters yp activities conferences cs initiatives and all recent information about the latest technologies and innovation The IEEE CS Compute focuses on exhibiting the true potential of volunteering opportunities and benefits with IEEE CS. So let us begin today's talk. Thanks a lot, Sneha, for joining us today. So how are you doing? Thank you for having me today, Ayan. I'm doing well. How are you? All good. All good. This side. Thank you so much. So let us quickly begin the series. I hope the audience will be really excited. So, like beginning with this podcast, uh, can you please share where you are born and brought up, and how you paved your path all the way from India and then moving to France? Thank you for this question, Ayan. Uh, certainly, I would be delighted to provide with some insights into my journey. So, I was born and brought up in Udupi, which is a city in the southwest of Indian state of Karnataka, and it is very renowned for the. temples and its heritage and one of the most monumental temple that we have uh, shri krishna temple and we get a lot of pilgrims that uh, come to visit every year so as i progressed uh, through my academics um, after my engineering i wasn't really sure that i would want to pursue uh, in the academics or in the professional field so whether i wanted to continue my studies or uh, take up any job you know how it works in india right uh, once you are done with engineering you have this placement drives in the college and such so by the end of college most of the students in the um, colleges they get placed in good companies so i was also shortlisted for one of the companies and uh, after we were done with the bachelor's exams i was not sure about again what what i'm doing is right whether it was the right decision uh so then my cousin he w- got into manipal university he was uh, he was selected for a masters degree that's when he got to know about another masters program it was called dual masters degree program in the manipal university so it involved a uh, master of engineering from manipal university and a second masters degree which was master of science from france when i heard about this i knew that i definitely wanted to pursue it and my family was very supportive of this decision so this transition from the small hometown to pursuing studies and research in the foreign country uh, it was a, a significant milestone for me especially in my academic and professional journey uh, the girl who hadn't been out of her home for the last 20 22 years she, she got the first opportunity to go and uh, experience something new so it was a journey that uh, demanded adaptation determination and immense amount of patience that is one thing i've learned here when uh, i when i moved here uh, to france and uh, it has definitely contributed to shaping who i am today uh, not only in terms of academics but also in terms of the professional landscape i hope this additional information provides you some comprehensive view of my journey thanks for allowing me to share this yeah it it was really really inspiring like coming all the way from india then moving to france and creating such a big impact i am pretty ho- hopeful that it will inspire a lot of audience so yeah moving to the next question you hail from an electronics background and you are currently researching in electrical and then chairing some events that is that are at iitpally computer society so like 
assuming this as a triangle electronics electrical and computer society so like domains today are very much interdisciplinary many of our audience wants to like make a career shift from electronics and maybe into it or maybe some other stuff so like can you advise them about interdisciplinary domains and reflect how normal this is absolutely i think this is a very good question and uh... Uh, the concept of this interdisciplinary domains it's becoming very increasingly vital especially in the where we are right now and uh, as the technology advances the boundaries between these traditional fields like electronics it they are blurring uh, creating more uh, exciting opportunities not only for the professionals and students they can diversify with their expertise so i can talk about my own journey which is a testament to this phenomenon while my academic foundation lies in electronics my research that i'm pursuing right now has led me into the field of electrical engineering and uh, this transition is a natural progression because the principles and the method uh, sorry methodologies uh, that you use in both the fields are shared a very common ground so in fact the transition you can say that it's a very smooth growth of skills rather than a total change so for those who are considering a career shift it's very crucial to uh, recognize that interdisciplinary domains are uh, not only normal but also very highly valuable uh, employers they not only seek the professionals who can bridge the gap between two dif- uh, different disciplines but also uh, if they can uh, foster an innovation and a comprehensive problem solving skills so i could say that uh, it is always an advantage knowing about uh, different domains you know uh, for example computer society i'm part of computer society but it is not my expertise but having a different point of view it's very interesting from a third person point of view so you sh- uh, when considering a career shift take this time to identify the overlaps between your current expertise and the target domain so you should leverage the skills that you um, already that exist and um, you can build up your new uh, uh, skills in the new venture right additionally you should uh, also uh, be open to continuous learning seek opportunities to acquire new knowledge in the new field so this will uh, definitely help you in uh, pursuing new career uh, do attend new workshops engage with the professionals in different domains so if you are uh, uh, contemplating with the career shift just challenge with the take it with the challenge enthusiasm and be confident that you're capable of doing it don't doubt yourself until and unless you don't take up this decision you never know so yeah that would be my advice that that, that was really insightful i must say um, thanks a lot for sharing so moving to the next question it is like uh, you have been volunteering in ieee for the past many years i think some four odd years and there are oh okay all right more than four maybe so there are challenges in every domain so how you, your experience has been in ieee so far and how you have overcame those challenges moving all the way from being into academia and then shifting into a professional domain um until now my experience within ieee it has been incredibly enriching I became part of IEEE in 2019 when I took up my PhD. So okay. until I uh, until I finished my PhD, I was not volunteering. I was just part of IEEE. I knew that we were publishing papers here and you do this uh, you know proceedings and everything. I didn't know the opportunities that you have in IEEE. Uh, for me it was just a way for a student how you look at it. It's a way for you to get into summer schools where you have some offers and uh, uh things like that you get um, uh, reductions when you are attending a conference just a normal student what is going to think about um, but i got to in involve in the leadership role it was i still remember it is not even an year that i started volunteering i tell you it will be next week it will be exactly one year that i started volunteering it was end of my phd and uh, i saw an e notice that came uh, that came across you know we receive uh, n number of emails from i was uh, la, part of one of the technical society dis and i saw a e notice that they are looking for a, a member for a committee of a yp i was i was like what is this yp it's like once you graduate you ca- you get to be a part of it and i was very interested so i was thinking 
so it's a global di is it's for me it's a very small society that i know right now because i triple it has 47 societies and the more, bigger one is uh, computer society and the second biggest one is pes power and energy and dis is a very small part of it it's a sister society of pes and we are hardly 3000 members or so but just being recognized in your domain because you know your directors and peers who are working in this domain are here and they know you through the conferences that you visit and you get to be a part of a global team that itself was a huge thing for me so it's like you have nothing to lose just apply for this position worst case scenario is that you might be rejected that could be nothing worse than that so that is how i got into my first uh, leadership position and uh, after the interview i was appointed as the europe representative for the dis young professional and uh, my excitement was So up to this sky level i was like oh my god this is this is so great i get to be a part of this imagine a person who didn't even know what is happening in ieee and now you directly get to be an european representative i was so happy so just to say that uh, you have so many opportunities that uh, keep coming in ieee you just have to keep your eyes open and don't uh, doubt yourself just go out there and apply for it and to answer the second half of the question transitioning from academia to professional setting it did come with a certain amount of challenges such as adjusting to a different work dynamics and expectations because academia you are much more free you are you can try uh, different possibilities but um, when you are with a company it's more of a hard deadline um, you need you have certain deadlines to approach to yeah so but thanks to the supportive network of ieee that have played a very vital role in helping me towards navigating these challenges we meet a lot of people who have come across this who have went from academia to research so when you listen to them you know that it is possible everyone has gone through it it is not something that uh, yeah you are the first person who is going to going through this right so when you hear about their experiences it gives you kind of encouragement and uh, confidence and uh, engaging with the fellow professionals attending events staying curious uh, it's what your uh, makes your transition very smooth from academy to professional career that that was really insightful i must say because there are several students who have this question in their mind about the transition and i hope it gives them proper insights about that so thanks for sharing that i hope and so too yeah so like moving to the next question and since we have been talking about ieee so far so uh, i i would like to know from like what is your perspective on this like what are the benefits of ieee what benefits ieee imparts on a general basis and how can a person make the best use of this ieee network so ieee it's it's immense i mean you have more than 400000 people you have so many opportunities you have just in computer society you have more than 1000 conferences more than 1000 technical workshops so many gatherings uh, yes. so many students get the opportunity to do so many things right so i triply imagine how much opportunity i triply in whole it has and uh, it is not about just about the opportunity and the uh, the way how it is impacting the society uh, in a good way and how through technology you can be a part of it that is the just knowing that you can do something good um, thanks to your technical domain or expertise that you have it feels good that uh, you're doing something good for the and uh, it is going to be seen out there the work that you're doing right it just feels good so ieee offers a really uh, wealth of benefits for students as well as the professionals so it is a platform for networking with experts in your field accessing the latest research and staying updated on the industry trends to make the best use of ieee i recommend actively participating in conferences and workshops joining technical societies that align with your interest and also taking advantage of the vast resources that are available to enhance your knowledge and to, it and for your career growth right so that is how i got into all the leadership roles that i have today thanks to all the networking events that's how people see that uh, uh, this person they have potential to do something so definitely we should get them on the team maybe we can have a third person point of view so every person have a different way of thinking 
makes sense makes a lot of sense and if we would like to like na- narrow down this, this answer from ieee in general to ieee in computer society so let me just move to the next question which is like you have been really active in ieee computer society as well so if we would narrow down the benefits of if we would like narrow down to the benefits of cs how this affiliation of cs have helped you in your career this is a small question i and do you think how for how long i might have been the part of cs computer society since you started volunteering like roughly a year ago you mentioned so maybe like 6 months 6 7 months yeah it's exactly that so yeah my affiliation with ieee computer society has been uh, immensely rewarding and it it has been quite a short time but i've got to learn so many things so many things because imagine being part of a huge community like uh, computer society and you're part of dis it is very small imagine 3000 members in one society and other side it's 300000 members mm-hmm. you see the difference uh, i get to see uh, how both um, uh, both the societies work because you get to have a different point of view that in a how do they uh, implement their ideas i get to implement them here or maybe i can implement the ideas from there to here so being part of the cs community has given me the chance to connect with like minded people and uh, learn about the different technologies that uh, and the contributions and advancements that you have in the field i got to be a part of computer society uh, thanks to the networking event where i met few people from the computer society who motivated me to uh take the membership of computer society that's all i did and then it's just you know it, it was a chain reaction i kept meeting people then i got to lead an uh, initiative of a computer society syp that is tech x and um, also the region 8 uh, student activity uh, committee coordinator it feels great that people show trust in you for your work that you have and uh, i just realized that there's so many opportunities out there especially in computer society for students and young professionals and the only regret that i might have would be why didn't i know about this earlier and why didn't i start volunteering or why didn't i join ieee earlier so i uh, we didn't have anyone to guide to to take that decision i would definitely uh, uh, say that if you need someone to mentor you um or uh, you need any guidance just go up to that person and ask them that uh, would you be my mentor there is nothing wrong in asking someone that's how i got my mentor he was talking about mentoring and he said don't be hesitant to talk i was moderating that event and he was like don't be hesitant to ask uh, ask your mentor i mean ask someone to mentor you and right after the uh, webinar i i wrote to him hey, would you be my mentor he said definitely yeah i would be your mentor so it just feels good that people and my uh, mentor he is uh, he has been in ieee for 52 years it just feels great how much they have contributed to the community in terms of technical uh, expertise and it just keep you engaged right it's it's amazing so through cs i have gained insights into the real world applications industry trends that have undoubtedly enhanced my career trajectory amazing amazing i will definitely keep this line in my mind of like reaching out to anyone and asking them just frequently like would you be my mentor so that was a really good key takeaway for me so it was really amazing listening to you and let us just quickly move to the last question which is like many students must be listening to you right now and any last remarks for them any key takeaways what they should keep in mind maybe in their college life in their professional career maybe in ieee and some key takeaways for them yeah absolutely ian um so to all the student members out there my advice is to keep learning and exploring uh, not to be hesitant about your capability of learning new domain or uh, going into the new field be it might be interdisciplinary field or anything so embrace new challenges I know change is always difficult it's a normal human tendency that whenever there is a small change you start to be like oh what is happening but you know that it would be it will be fine at the end just give it a try and without trying you never know that you are capable of doing it or not and uh, it is very essential changes can be good not only for personal but also professional go- uh, growth 
So don't hesitate to join professional organizations like IEEE. They provide a very good platform for uh, continuous learning, networking, contributing to your field. And uh, your journey is unique. Everyone's journey is unique. I might have one kind of journey. Maybe you, Aryan, you might have a different journey compared to me, right? Your experiences are different. How you got into IEEE? Who motivated to you to be, uh, you know, contributing at this level as a volunteer? So everyone have their own capabilities. Just because uh, I started late in IEEE, it doesn't mean that I uh, doubt my capabilities of uh, volunteering. I might have joined late. But I'm still as energetic as a 20 year old person <laughs> right now. So just stay curious and never stop seeking knowledge. That would be my advice to all the youngsters and students and professionals, everyone out there. Yeah. That was a really good key takeaway because like what I have learned in life is the early you start, the better opportunities you can grab and like be an early mover. But listening to your story, it even gives us a learning that you can start at any age. Yes, so yeah. like that was really good because there are many people who think that they are already late. What impact that that like they can create right now. But listening to you, I hope they realize that you can start at any moment. It's just that how impact, how much impact you're creating in the society. So that was a really good takeaway. No, after starting volunteering, I just realized that half of my committee members are very younger than me. I was like, what, what was I even doing back then? How come I didn't know about all these uh, amazing opportunities there are, right? And uh, yeah, but I still never felt that I don't have that energy right now because I knew that I'm really committed to what I'm going to take up, the leadership roles. It, I might take 10 roles, but I know that if I take up a role, I'm going to do it with as much as the dedication uh, each and every role and uh, if I'm not able to do it, I don't take it up. That, that's that's it. That's very clear, clear for me. I mean, if I'm capable of doing it, only then I take it up. If I'm not, I don't take it up. That's it. That was really great. So it was indeed very much insightful listening to you. And even like I have noted so many points that I will be taking in my life, like I will be taking them up in my career. So thanks a lot for them and I hope our audience gets to learn something new through this podcast and we will be like coming with more such podcast series and I hope you become IEEE member soon. In order to check more details, you can just google IEEE.org and we hope to see you on the other side of the table. Thanks a lot Sneha for joining up today. It thank was great wonderful again. listening to you. Yeah, thank you once again for having me on this podcast. Thanks a lot. So. All right. Bye bye, guys. Take care. See you all in another podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye.